Boyd Crowder, played by Walton Goggins, is the main antagonist in the TV series Justified. He grew up in Harlan County, son to Bo Crowder and brother to Bowman Crowder. At the age of 19, he was working in the coal mines, along with his friend and star of the series, Raylan Givens, played by Timothy Oliphant. When Raylan left to pursue a career as a U.S. Marshal, Boyd also left Kentucky to join the Army and was present during Operation Desert Storm in Kuwait. After he returned to Harlan County, he ended up in a federal correctional institution for not paying his taxes. There he got involved with white supremacy and militia groups, and when he was released, he took up the cause and recruited all sorts of like-minded men who in turn helped Boyd rob banks. And robbing banks isn't all Boyd does. He just loves blowing shit up. You know, I just crush on. Fire now! <laughs> Over time and episodes, Boyd changes, and changes dramatically. When Raylan and Boyd meet at Ava's house to apparently draw a line in the sand, Ava tries to shoot Boyd but misses. Raylan doesn't miss, but Boyd does survive and ends up in the hospital. Oh, you did it, huh? He really did. He did it. Boyd claims divine intervention at this point and that Raylan saved his life because he has now come to Jesus. He vows to follow a more enlightened path and even starts up a church in the woods. Although his followers are questionable, vagrants, drug addicts and the like, he tells them that Raylan saved his life by shooting him. And while we don't have saints in our church, if we did, he would be the first Saint Raylan. For he worked a miracle in my life and was the agent of my salvation. Patrick seed of lost causes, I suspect. Well, there already is one at St. Jude. Oh, well, there you go. Another lost cause. Parts of the old boy shine through, however, when he threatens an ongoing meth operation and, when they don't shut down, he blows it up. You can stop what you're doing here. Playing bullets. Cooking methamphetamine. Oh, no, don't! Shut up! And when Boyd attends a church service where Daddy Bo is present, he looks right at Bo and deliberately refers to God as his one true father. Bo and Boyd are at odds because Bo wants him to get back into the criminal enterprise and Boyd insists on staying on the straight and narrow. Like Jesus, like Jesus, we must never be afraid to strike out against those who practice evil. He is my one true father. Boyd even hijacks a drug shipment bound for his father and blows up the drugs with a rocket launcher, his seemingly preferred weapon. Fire in the hole! <laughs> Bo is now in debt to those who are delivering the drugs, Miami crime lords, and he executes Boyd's entire flock and kidnaps Ava, played by Joelle Carter, in retribution. His idea is to trade her for Raylan and then give Raylan to the Miami crime lords who have been after Raylan for some time as he killed one of theirs in Miami. In fact, that public killing is what got Raylan sent back to Harlan County in the first place. I'll send Johnny to tell you where this hand of God will strike next. So Boyd helps Raylan get to Ava, and they get the drop on Bo, but they're ambushed by the Miami guys before they can get her out. Bo is dead. Raylan and Boyd work together to kill all but one of the Miami thugs who gets away. Season 2 begins with religion and faith being thrown out the window. Boyd ends up working again at the coal mine, and a few of his co-workers talk him into robbing the mine. Boyd finds out they're going to double-cross him and leave him buried in the mine. So instead, Boyd wreaks just enough havoc to turn the tables. Boyd takes the explosives they placed in the bag he was carrying and sneaks them into one of their bags, and they explode and die instead of him. 
Boyd's eloquence, some would say he's verbose. I gotta ask, where'd you get all those teeth? Courtesy of the American taxpayer while serving our great nation in Desert Storm. Man, I love the way you talk. Using 40 words where four will do. Is what really drew in a lot of viewers. Match up that eloquence with intelligence and a very charming southern drawl, and you've got a recipe for success, if you're an outlaw. I understand that I'm very new to the security game. However, I have spent a considerable amount of time hiding explosives. Now, if you would like, I'd be more than happy to walk around here with you, show you where I would hide mine, in case there might be a place that you might miss. As an aside, Goggins initially didn't even want to be in the series. He wasn't interested in becoming a one-note white supremacist actor and only agreed to be in the series because he was friends with Timothy Oliphant and he wanted to be killed off in the first episode, which is what happened in the short story the series was based on, Fire in the Hole by Elmore Leonard. By the way, Leonard had an incredibly successful career and many of his novels and stories were adapted to the big screen, including The Tall T, 310 to Yuma and Jackie Brown, to name a few. But Goggins took the role of Boyd Crowder and made it something living. He managed to shed the skin of the neo-Nazi skinhead persona and become, well, Boyd. And the ratings reflected that. Boyd changed from season to season as the stories unfolded and situations changed. His clothing, his mannerisms, all were tweaked a bit for each successive season. In fact, one of his gang made this remark. I just want to know which Boyd Crowder I'm being asked to follow. Boyd interacts with almost all of the characters in the series, including the Bennetts, who we meet in season two. Megs Bennett, played by Margot Martindale, is the matriarch of the Bennett family, and Martindale plays her to perfection. We'll be dedicating an entire video to Megs Bennett and a few of the other Justified characters soon. At one point, Megs' son, Dickie Bennett, bashes Raylan on the head while he's making an arrest. And when Raylan wakes, he is strung up like a pinata with Dickie hitting him with a baseball bat. Hello, Raylan. Huh? I bet you'd like a handful of aspirin for that headache right about now, wouldn't you? Hmm? Oh, shit. Oh, foul ball. Ah, you rock one. Boyd actually comes to Raylan's rescue and makes Dickie cut him down, but it's for selfish reasons. Dickie shot Ava and Boyd wants his revenge. Shoot him now. Or let him have a couple of more swings and kill him. I vote for the first one. He agrees to loan Dickie to Raylan, as Raylan needs his help. Well, are you asking me? Or are you telling me? Makes you feel better? You can tell people I asked. But Raylan doesn't give him back, and that has Boyd a little upset. Almost seems like a couple of school kids squabbling. Or perhaps brothers. I want you to apologize. For the crack about the Mexicans? I would suggest what you're looking for is a thank you. Boyd does love to talk. We'll certainly give him that. But no one was complaining. He was almost mesmerizing when he spoke. And given the floor or the mic, he won't hesitate to use his extensive vocabulary and talk the pants off all who will listen. But he's not just talking nonsense. He has great insight into his audience, be it at a town meeting or in a church, and knows how to get the crowd on his side. If I was behind an attempt on your life, at the very least, I would have messed up your hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Now, what's your question there, Boyd? You think that Shelby's the only man in this room been done wrong by a coal mining company? Men standing on the company side, laughing at all us hillbillies who were just trying to stand up for what we believed in. Season 3 sees one of Boyd's thugs, Devil, played by Kevin Rankin, betray Boyd. He was pissed that Boyd no longer cared about the white supremacist movement, and so he joins forces with yet another bad guy, Robert Quarles, played by Neil McDonough, to kill Boyd. Boyd is seemingly nonplussed about all of this, but in the end, shoots Devil and kills him. Devil, knowing me the way that you do, whatever led you in your imagination to believe that you could pull this off? The devil. Wait! All I ever asked for was your loyalty, was I not entitled to that? While Boyd's character is evolving, we cannot neglect to mention Ava Crowder, played by the beautiful Joelle Carter. While there are some pretty strong female supports in this movie, Ava is a constant throughout the series. Strong and resourceful, Ava truly heads down the rabbit hole when she and Boyd get together. 
Boyd now literally has a partner in crime in Ava Crowder, and with her, Boyd can envision a life together. He sees a world where they can be part of the elite, higher-ups in the criminal world, if you will, and seek to align themselves with a group of corrupt businessmen who in turn think that they can control Boyd. I think you're missing the point. Your daddy got the point. Crowders do what we say. I'm gonna be crystal goddamn clear. They, however, have underestimated Boyd Crowder. Turns out fear is a powerful motivator, even more powerful than greed. And I know people like you are used to taking from people like me. But there comes a point when people like me can't take any more taking. And all the things you've done, the way you've built your fortunes, it might make you criminals, but it don't make you outlaws. I am the outlaw. Season six, the final season in the Justified series, brings yet another Boyd Crowder. In the past seasons, you just had to like Boyd and often cheered him on, but not so much now. Boyd becomes dark and consumed by vengeance, and when he kills Dewey Crow, that was tough because Dewey was a pretty harmless, low-level intelligence guy who seemed to be in the show to relieve some of the intensity. Yes. up in a carpet and you make him disappear. Also in the final season, Boyd takes a cop car and impersonates a police officer to pull over Hagen, played by Shay Wiggum. Now Hagen thinks Boyd is a hero. Got damn right I know your name. You near seen we got the Billy the Kid around here. But Boyd could care less what Hagen thinks and kills him anyway. Let me guess, I killed him. My men killed him. My dope killed him and my daddy killed him. You ain't even heard a word I said. I don't give a shit about what you said. I'm an outlaw. At this point, we begin to feel Boyd heading towards an ending that the viewers might not be prepared for. Well, someday I am looking out. And when I do, I'm gonna kill a rabbit. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna kill you. So what's it gonna be, Ray? We see Boyd back in prison preaching to the convicts. I know what you're thinking. I see you nodding. You're thinking, God damn, boy, how many times I got to listen to this story? Well, as many as it takes. Raylan pays him a visit to let him know that Ava is dead. Well, she's not, but that news is the only thing that will keep her alive, given her betrayal of Boyd. We did. What is that name she was using at the time? The home and driver's license. You match the DNA to a hair from a broken horn. Boyd asks Raylan why he would come all the way to the prison to let him know about Ava. And Raylan tells Boyd that some news is best delivered in person. One of the greatest TV series in any genre. If you haven't seen Justified, you should put it on your must-watch list. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and leave us a comment below. And remember to subscribe to our channel to be notified when we make more.